Hey, deserved listeners, I thought I would react today on TikTok videos that are about psychology. Let's watch. Psychological tricks that will change your life, part seven. If you whisper to somebody, they will whisper back, even if there's no reason to do so. Yo, dad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a mystery as to why that would be if you whisper the person you're whispering to assumes you're whispering for a reason and you don't want to be discovered, there's a danger or something. And so, yeah, the other person will whisper back. But, you know, I don't think that's a mystery. Did your mother ever tell you you need to play hard to get? If she didn't, she should have. Sometimes we've got to play a little hard to get in order to get what we want. I'm going to give you eight very simple little words that you can use right now that are going to draw so many TikToks about how to manipulate other people to like you which as i say that out loud is a indication of a lot of lonely people that gives me great sadness <laughs> this video has 50,000 likes why is that well because people are lonely and that makes me incredibly sad and it makes me sad that there's all these tips that are kind of empty you know, and listen to all my episodes, my podcast episodes on loneliness, and it's a complicated thing. And obviously, relationship loneliness is even more complicated, as you know. So he's saying, in order to get someone to like you, you have to play hard to get. Now, there's a lot of complexity to that claim, and often it's discussed in this very simplistic way. Like, you got to play games, you don't text them back right away after the first date, this kind of thing. It's not that simple. Getting someone to like you is extremely complicated. Getting and retaining someone's like of you in the beginning is also extremely complicated. But there is some wisdom into thinking about how you're coming across as someone. If you come across as extremely desperate, then it turns other people off sometimes. Some people actually really respond to desperateness. They're like, oh, I'm desperate too. Let's be desperate together. So, you know, it really just depends. The idea that you have to play a game in order to get someone to like you is false. Most people respond to authenticity. Most people respond to genuineness. Most people respond when you say you like them. On its face, if that's all you did was just play a game, no one will ever know you like them, and so no one will ever respond to you, <laughs> you know? Now, I will say that there is a known phenomenon among humans, regardless of gender, that when we perceive someone as special, we are more attracted to them. So if someone walks into a room and they have paparazzi around them and then they sit down next to you, where you know, you meet someone on Tinder and they come in and everyone walks up to them and says, oh my God, I, I love your work. And they're shaking the, this person's hand and then the person sits down and says, oh, or, you know, we're on Tinder day. On average, you're gonna be more attracted. You're gonna see them as more attractive. You're gonna think of, you're gonna laugh at their jokes. You're gonna think their jokes are funnier. This is a known thing. It, this is, there's all sorts of things. Any marker of prestige or wealth or rank in society, if you wear a suit, for example, you are more respected. Prestige is an attractor and markers of prestige. And so one of the ways that you can fake prestige is to play hard to get or to seem like you're too cool for school to make it seem like you have better things to do, to make it seem like you have a lot of other options. And then that can, on average, maybe cause someone to up you on the prestige ladder, which might cause them to be more attracted to you. But of course, we all understand that our own attraction is extremely complicated. And just seeing someone who has, who we might think has a little bit more prestige than us doesn't automatically cause us to fall in love with him. But he is going to say, here are seven words that you can use when you wanna play hard to get that can manipulate people to fall in love with you. Let's see what he says. People in, they're gonna help you get your way both in business and sales and in life. What are these eight words? I'm not sure if it's for you, but whenever you're introducing an idea, just lead with, I'm not sure if it's for you, but. Okay, yeah, uh, will that always work? Of course not. But what he's talking about sales, he's not talking about trying to get someone to fall in love with you. So yeah, in sales, if you're, and there's a lot of psychology of sales. If you meet a good salesperson, they've read a lot of psychology or they know a lot of psychology because there's obviously, that's all that it is, is psychology. You're trying to get someone to do something and there's a very subtle art to convincing someone to 
you know, buy a car or something. But yeah, so to, you don't necessarily have to say the phrase, but the idea is to soften it a little bit and to come across, to give this impression like, look, I don't know about you, but da da da. And I say that a lot, you know, I, I, as a therapist, and I, I'm not trying to manipulate people, I'm just trying to provide an appropriate softener to what I'm about to say. I'm about to say something, but I don't want people to think I'm saying it's true for everyone. So I think that's what Easton is saying here, Matt Easton is saying here. He's saying, if you're trying to say, hey, this more expensive car is better than the cheaper car, you're trying to sell the expensive car because of the commission, and you say, you know, I don't know if this is true for you, but when I buy a car, I want just the right car. You know, something like that, you know, might be a factor in persuasion. I'm not sure if it's for you, but our software is helping small business owners reduce labor costs by 17%. I'm not sure if it's for you, but I'm going to a party this weekend. Might be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, the principle is when you pressure people and they, they feel that, that pressure, uh, not always, but people tend to, you know, back away. Like, oh, I'm being pressured. I don't like that feeling. It feels claustrophobic. And so saying this softens that. It's just like, look, I don't know if it's for you, but da 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 It gives them a chance to not feel like you're directly pressuring them with a persuasive statement. Sure. Notice how when you say, I'm not sure if it's for you, but suddenly that person wants to lean and goes, oh yeah, it's for me. Hey, follow this channel for more tips on how to be successful in business and life. There's always something in these videos where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but you know, he's saying, you know, notice how when they do that. And I've, I've found that trainers of salespeople tend to talk that way. They tend to talk in these, not always, but often anecdotally, they'll talk in these very absolutist terms. And I'm not sure why they do that. I think it's they're trying to sell their program or something. And if they're wishy-washy about it, maybe they perceive they're not going to get as many sales. But this idea that it always works is, you know, I, I think any salesperson would say, no, of course not. But, you know, might it, might it work? Sure. It's a good tip to use for some situations. If you're ever feeling tired or unmotivated, you can try this one weird trick to break out of it and feel way more energized. This trick helps your mind reset by breaking through your typical thought patterns. So here it is. If you're ever feeling tired or unmotivated, go change your socks and then brush your teeth. Sounds weird, I know. So I don't mind the way he uh, see pursuit of better. Uh, I, don't mind, I don't mind this presentation because it's not exaggeratory. <laughs> it's saying, if you ever have you know, trouble with energy, ch change your socks and brush your teeth. Might at work, sure. <laughs> you know, a fresh new start, sure. That might work for some people. Yeah, I don't know the research on that, but might at work, yeah. But changing your socks helps you feel like you're doing something productive. And in order to be consistent with that, our brains then want to do even more productive. See, there's always this leap. There's always this claim. It'd be one thing if Pursuit of Better said, I think, da 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 Or the way I see it, da 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 Okay. But to say it, and again, this is a psychology hack. It's all in the psychology, hashtag psychology hack. Then it has this air of legitimacy and research and science, which, uh, and maybe there is, but they certainly wouldn't, scientists would never say that because we don't know. There's no way to, to know why. You, you know, you, you do an experiment of motivation in socks and you measure the two groups and maybe there's a signal there. I don't know. I've, I haven't seen that research, but the, what he's saying is it makes you feel productive and therefore you want to continue that. Like, well, maybe. So actually this next video, someone emailed me and uh, on YouTube, it was just a quick little video and I thought I would react to it during my TikTok reaction. So let's watch. Okay, they're at a pep rally at a high school in the United States, I believe. And they have kids in the high school that are blindfolded and they are told someone is gonna come kiss you and you're not going to know who it is. And then they have one of their parents come up and kiss them. And then the, 
the kids don't know it's their parent and proceed to make out with their parents. Now, if this was, I don't know, done in a different way. So the first thing I'll say is this could be extremely triggering to the individuals involved, to any audience members. Obviously, we understand that sexual abuse happens, and this is, I guess, in kind of in that direction. So I'll say that. I'll say you're just asking for a lawsuit. <laughs> At the very least, you're just asking for bad press. I mean, everything's filmed these days. Well, I'll say that we in the United States have kind of a weird relationship when it comes to affection between parents and children. For those of you who watch my reaction videos, remember when a Suelu, uh, who's an adult man, kissed his mom on the cheek, and it was kind of long. You know, the mom was really excited to see him, hadn't seen him in a couple years or something. And, you know, and it kind of looked like they kissed on the lips. And the audience and the wife were disgusted. Like, you kissed your mom on the lips. It was disgusting. And what I was saying was, it's not disgusting to kiss your mom on the lips. It's totally normal. It's not normal to do this. I don't know under any circumstances is this typical. But in terms of, like, the landscape of what this video or the reactivity to it is, you know, partly based on, I think we tend to over-pathologize affection between parents and children. And full disclosure, what I'll say is I kiss my mom on the lips when I see her every time. I, I kiss other, I, I kiss extended family members on the lips. I don't know if it's a Japanese thing. My mom's not Japanese. I don't know if it's my family thing. I don't know. But it's a thing. And I've never felt it to be sexual <laughs> or anything other than it's just a thing of affection. And uh, you know, the alternative is what we see in a lot of families, which is a complete absence of affection, and people suffer when there's not affection. We need affection. We don't need to kiss our parents on the lips, but, you know, anything that has affection is, is a good thing. This is not in that category. I'm just, I'm just giving you kind of the, the landscape of, like, the shock value of this, you know. Anyway, the other thing here is you're in front of a crowd. So if I was—so the other element of the parents know— the parents know that is my child, and I am going to go over there and act like I'm someone else. Now, so it'd be one thing if you if if this video is, and I don't know how this is going to progress, but one thing if you just went in and went, uh, and then the the kid in the blindfold was like, "Ooh, who is that?" You know, but it was just a peck, right? Then maybe I don't like pranks. I just I'm not a fan. But okay, the parents know, and the parents are really, you know, getting into it. The kid just thinks they're making out with a classmate. So there's nothing odd about the kid. So it's really the parents that are the odd ones. And I, you know, we don't know what the teachers told them. The teachers might have said, you know, just go up and kiss and da da da, you know, because the teachers encourage them, really try to sell it by making out with your kid. But of course, the parents could have said no. So if we have an indictment, it's the parents and it's their own kid. So. <laughs> Uh, let's watch. I mean, one of the kids was going for second base, I think. It looked like one of the kids was like, ugh. <laughs> and because maybe realizing like that doesn't seem right. So there wasn't a universal reaction to it, but, but yeah, I mean, of course, you know, all the kids are going nuts and it's funny and now, okay. Would this cause trauma? Mm, not necessarily. Could it cause trauma? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just imagine now, why would you volunteer to be in a, in an exercise like this? Might some of the kids know that it's, that it is their mom and they're just kind of playing it up. Maybe, I don't know though. Is, is this the end of the world as we know it? No. Is it a good idea? No. So they ask, you know, how is that? He's just like, those are the most luscious lips. I've. That guy was, and his mom were really making out. Now, oh, golly. <sighs> I cannot imagine someone that I know 
doing? I'm just trying to think, is this relatable at all? And I'm assuming Rosemount High School is at least similar to my culture. I don't know. Okay, it is in Minnesota, and there's an article written in the New York Daily News, and they talk about it. They were flooded with outside complaints. And then one of the teacher, one of the parents said they thought it was fine. The principal said, I'm responsible for everything that happens in the school. This event offended people, and pep fest should have nothing that offends people. So it's one of those non-apology apologies where it's just like, oh, I'm sorry if I offended people, and I guess I won't do it anymore. So, yeah, uh, I think it's, um, you know, is it top deplorable activity that's happened in our country? <laughs> no. <laughs> should... Uh, schools not do this. Yeah, there, there's no reason to do it. There are risks to doing it. Uh, you know, this kid right here could feel completely ashamed of himself after, you know, this could be a really publicly humiliating thing. So is it the end of the world? I don't think so. <laughs> So I don't know, but the way that the kid reacts, so the kid was, the tall kid was one of the few people that was really kind of going for it with the makeout thing. And then they ask him, you know, what do you think? And she, he's like, oh, she had luscious lips. And then he's like, okay, well, take off your blindfold and see who kissed you. Takes off the blindfold, sees his mom, throws the blindfold down, he's smiling. Did he know from the beginning? Did they even plan it? Did they just agree that they would not really kiss kiss, but they would kind of play it up. Kind of had that look, maybe, I don't know. Was he completely traumatized by this and he just acted like everything was fine? Were there other kids who you know weren't focused on that did have some issue? All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it, you really, really do.